All right, welcome everyone to the Wyoming Women's Business Center's 2022 Business Education Webinar Series. Today's presentation is Elevating Your Artwork Sales Online. My name is Jessica Brower, and I'm the Marketing Director at the Wyoming Women's Business Center, and I'm going to be your speaker today. So you'll see the agenda on your screen. We'll get started with some brief information about the WWBC and then jump into our content for today, where we're really going to take a thousand foot view at looking at making sales online. First, looking at the pros and cons of selling online, and then we'll talk a little bit about online platforms, your brand, and lastly, your strategy before diving into a Q&A section. So before we start, I do wanna point out the Zoom control panel on the bottom of your screen. I want to call attention to both the Q&A and the chat function. If you have any comments or questions during the webinar today, I'd like you to use those. If you haven't yet, go ahead and feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. You'll see some of us have been doing that over there. I'd love to know where you're joining us from and what line of business you're working in. As you may have seen, this webinar is being recorded and a link to access that recording via Zoom will be sent out to all registrants shortly after the live event today. So please feel free to share that link with your peers, your team, or any of your friends who you think would enjoy or benefit from today's content. If you're watching this webinar live, a survey will launch shortly after we close the presentation. It's just a six question survey. If you could, please complete this. It provides us and our funding partners with valuable information. And just as a reminder, all participants are muted just to minimize any background noise. So again, if you have any questions or comments during the presentation, go ahead and use the chat box or the questions panel. <coughs> so let's go over some quick information about the WWBC in case you aren't familiar with us already. We are a nonprofit organization whose mission is to enable and empower Wyoming entrepreneurs with a special emphasis on women. And we do that through five distinct programs. The first is our business education webinars, which is what brought you here today. Our staff hosts these free 30 minute webinars each week. Next, we have our flagship education program called Dream Builder. This is a free facilitated eight week online course and it's for building or perfecting your business plan with the support of our business counselors. Additionally, we offer one on one business counseling. Next, we have our microloan program, which offers loans from $500 to $50,000 for businesses that have been denied from a traditional lending source. And lastly, we have the Artist Development Center that we run in conjunction with the Works of Wyoming store, which is located in downtown Laramie and online at worksofwyoming.com. And what I really want to get across to you is that we specialize in micro enterprises. So these are businesses that have less than six employees and the majority are one or two person businesses. And most of these businesses were able to launch for under $35,000. So businesses like yoga studios and hairstylists, daycare providers, marketing consultants, photographers, cleaning service, these are all great examples of our clients. And those of you who are joining today as artists, I think it's very important to remember that not all entrepreneurs are artists, but all artists are entrepreneurs. So all of these resources that I've share, shared are here to support you and your work as well. So if you're not already a client of the WWBC and you'd like to be, it's quick and easy. You can sign up by going to wyomingwomen.org and clicking on that red sign up now button. It's at the top of the page. And one last note before we get started, I would like to thank our presenting sponsor, the Wyoming Arts Council, for their contribution to the Wyoming Women's Business Center and Artist Development Program. It's with their support for Wyoming's artists that we're able to offer this free education resource for you. So we're gonna go ahead and start with a quick poll. It's gonna be a two, two question poll. So this should launch on your screen. So go ahead and take a moment to answer the two questions. The first one is a simple yes or no. Are you currently selling your artwork online? And the second one asks, what are your current goals for your art sales? So just select whatever resonates most. Maybe you're wanting to launch your online store and begin to sell online. You're not selling already. 
or maybe you're already online and you want to increase those sales, or you just want to drive traffic to your store with your marketing and other places online. Or maybe you're just here to feel it out and learn if online sales are a good fit for your work or not. <clears throat> I'm gonna give it just a couple more seconds. It looks like we have about 80% participation. Also welcome to those of you who said hi in the chat, Jennifer, Jane, Maya. Awesome. Looks like everybody has completed this. So it actually looks like we have pretty much uh, split down the middle on far as far as who's selling online and who's not. So that's great. And then we have a little bit of everything as far as current goals go, which is great to see. So like I said, we're gonna take a thousand foot view here and really take a look at a few different topics and not get real into the nitty gritty, but I hope that this helps you uh, move towards these goals, whatever those may have been. So to kick things off, here's just a quick overview of some pros and cons to selling your artwork online, which maybe is helpful to those of you who are still on the fence on what you want to do. So on the pros side here on the left, you'll see it broadens your reach. It just allows you to reach more people outside of your community. It supplements your income, which we all love to see. It's a um, lower brick and mortar overhead. So it's it will cost less than if you bought a space and had rent and all of your utilities. Inexpensive startup costs, so this is similar. You can start selling online for relatively low investment. And then I said self-paced inventory and business growth. And <clears throat> by this, I mean that you're able to control how much work you're making, as opposed to if you were selling in another retail store and you they had a high demand for your product and you weren't able to keep up or vice versa. If you wanted to make more and it wasn't selling as much, this would all be self-paced and you'd be in control of your sales. On the con side, you'll see <laughs> lack of in-person connection, which can be tough for some. Pricing expectations. Sometimes there's an idea that when you're selling online, that means your prices need to be lower in order to compete with online, the big box online stores. I don't think this is necessarily true. However, I think this is something that can feel like kind of a hang up. There's a need to stand out. There's so many people who are selling online. So when it comes to selling online, it does require some careful work to make sure that people are finding you. And that's some of the stuff we're gonna talk about here today. Then I have shipping expenses. So if you're not selling in stores and that means you're shipping them off. So that comes with some added costs as well as that digital marketing skill set. In order to sell your work online, you're going to need to work on honing your skills in digital marketing, which is, what we're doing here today. So there are a lot of reasons to sell your work online, which have been really reinforced by the changing business landscape with the effects of COVID in the last few years. And most industries have been challenged to move their sales online to keep cash flowing as shoppers are browsing and buying from home using digital stores, online ordering, and even delivery services. Now, all of that's to say, if you're making the sales you need in person and it's working for you, by all means, keep doing what works. There are exceptions to every rule. And while having an online presence is critical for most small businesses, artists included, selling online may not be the best fit for you and your work. And that's totally okay. So we've chatted about the pros and cons of selling your artwork online. Now we're gonna start to discuss three elements that are important for elevating your online sales. And first up is your platform. And by this, I mean, where are you gonna sell your work? So when you consider your platform of choice, some things to explore are, what are you actually selling? Is it original works or are you selling prints? Maybe it's jewelry or sculpture, or maybe it's music or written works. So this is going to be the largest determinant of what kind of platform you decide to use because many of them are tailored for different kinds of work. Next is what support do you need? Are you looking to DIY this website or do you need some tools to assist you with things like shipping or connecting with your customers or even some extra marketing support? 
what commission feels appropriate. There are endless platform options when it comes to selling your artwork and their commission and fee rates will really vary based on the services they offer. So as you start to hone in on where you'd like to be as far as platforms go, you'll be able to explore these in more detail and see what feels like it fits your budget and goals. And lastly, what kind of investment would you like to make? Are you looking to build something with little investment? Or are you committed to building something that's more custom that you're gonna use for many years to come and you're ready to spend some money on that? So now we're gonna to start to look at four different kinds of online platforms that are available to you. And like I said, there are endless options. However, I've pulled together what I think are probably the four most common, and I've included a popular example from each one. So first is online art galleries. These platforms are focused on collectors of fine art and original works. So imagine the experience of being in your favorite in-person art gallery, but this is online. So you can expect to find gallery collections of works that are curated around themes and styles and specific artists. Now, showing your work on these online galleries and marketplaces allows you to expand your reach and search for potential buyers. The best online galleries, ideally, they're putting your work in front of a large demographic that's actively looking to buy art and to buy original art. And people are buying art online. In an online art trade report from 2020, this shows that online art market sales reached an estimated 4.64 billion with a B in 2019. And it's estimated that with the pandemic, <clears throat> these numbers have grown even larger. So as is true for most platforms you're going to find, a commission percentage goes to the host site and the remainder of the sale price goes to the artist. Next is artist marketplaces. So these online marketplaces are ideal for dipping your toes in the water of selling art online, especially less expensive pieces. So one of the most common platforms, which I imagine you've likely heard of is Etsy. Now this platform hosts a large variety of work, including customizable or commission options as well. Again, commission fees are here, but they're minimal and you can still build a direct relationship with the people who are buying your art. Prints, crafts, and smaller original artworks can do well on marketplace sites, and they can be a really good stepping, so stepping stone to selling your work at an online gallery once you've built up that audience using their platform. So many artists start off by selling their work on a platform like Etsy as a way to get familiar, start to build an audience before launching their own online store. And an added benefit from a platform that's as popular as Etsy is that there are many, many, many artists of different mediums selling work there. And so this means there are great resources for best practices and community building among artists and makers, which is just as valuable as making sales when it comes to operating a thriving small business and learning to take that online. Next is print on demand websites, like what is pictured is Society6. So print on demand websites are an increasingly popular outlet for artists and designers to sell their work online. What's especially appealing about print on demand is that once you've uploaded a high quality image of your artwork, the print on demand site takes care of everything else from there. So that image will then be printed on anything from art prints to phone cases, t-shirts, pillows, there's many options. So the perks here are that all the work that goes into sourcing materials, printing and shipping are handled by this platform. Of course, this is only gonna be an option for artists that are creating work that's digital or can be photographed flat. And just like other platforms, artists receive a percentage of the sale and the host site takes what will look like a much larger percentage because they're co covering all of those costs in printing and sourcing and shipping. Now, lastly, is the option of building your own online store and website. And there are many resources for building websites at a variety of price points, all with different features that work well for different kinds of artists. Big Cartel is a website hosting option that's run by artists and was built for artists. 
They've been building stores for creatives for nearly a decade. And so they've really figured a few things out about selling art online. And similarly is Shopify, which is pictured on the screen. Now, the great thing about these platforms is that they don't require you to code your own website. So the, their design features are really user-friendly and the support in customizing your, your, your unique website is quite robust. Now, the perks of doing it yourself are that it is entirely yours, which means you have much more freedom when it comes to design. It also means that those commission fees aren't going to be an issue. Now, typically there is a standard fee for hosting on these platforms, which can be charged monthly or annually, as is true for any website. Of course, with this freedom and customizing option comes a steeper learning curve and the investment of your time and energy in building that website that works for you. So <clears throat> we've chatted about the wide variety of options that are available for hosting your online sales. And we have only skimmed the surface. So I highly suggest taking some time to explore which style of website feels like a great fit, knowing your work and seeing all the platforms out there that are available. So next, I wanna talk briefly about your brand. And by your brand, I mean, what is the consistent image and experience that you're presenting? Branding is an important piece of any small business. However, it goes well beyond a logo that's printed on a t-shirt or a coffee mug or a business card. So in its simplest form, your brand is your business identity. So for you as an artist, this brand identity could run very parallel to your individual identity and who you are in your community. However, that doesn't mean that this is an element of business that you should just skip over or that does not apply to you. So if you find yourself questioning, what's the point? Do I really need a brand? Here are four really important reasons. First off, your brand identifies your identity. It discerns you from your competitors and others in your field. This identity is important to signal to your customers who you are and what you're offering. Next, it's going to communicate your value. Your brand helps establish what sets you apart. So perhaps that's your philosophy or your style or your price point. For all of you, there is a unique value about your work and your brand helps establish this in the mind of your customers. Now, this brand also helps you reach your ideal market. So the customers who are the best fit for your work, it communicates to them that you're a compatible match. And lastly, it creates consistency, which is an incredibly important element for all of the other three points. Consistency is the way you present your business. <clears throat> and it's what solidifies that unique value to your customers. It allows your community to become familiar with your work and to understand how it fits into their life, how it makes them feel, why they want it there. And they know when they see a piece of marketing from you without having to look too hard that it's you. And this consistency is what allows customers to become loyal. They know what to expect from you time and time again, and they keep showing up. So there's three key, key elements to a well-rounded well brand. These include your brand imagery, your brand personality, and your brand strategy. Where all of these come together is your holistic brand. So first off, imagery. This is oftentimes thought to be the only element of a brand, or even the most important. And I'd argue that it can be a little overhyped. It's easy to get deep in the weeds on designing your logos and picking color palettes and fonts that feel right for your business brand. However, they're a small piece of that puzzle. And I'm gonna share some examples here in a moment to show that you don't need to make it complicated if you don't have the time or desire or resources to do that right now. Next up is that brand personality. How are you gonna speak about your business to your customers? What do people say about their experience with you after they walk away from your conversation? What kind of language are you using? And what kind of language are you not using? What can people expect from engaging with you and your content? Are you going to make them laugh? Are you going to make them smile? We make them think. Is it lighthearted or are you asking bigger questions? And lastly, is your brand strategy? 
How do you take your imagery and personality and push it out there into the world? What kind of outreach are you engaging in? Are you sending emails or posting social media content? Or are you making cold calls or connecting at local markets? What's your plan? So today we're here to talk about elevating your sales online. And your brand identity comes into great use online, whether you're on your website or social media or crafting email messaging. And like I said, I wanted to share with you a few examples of how a brand can look online. So here's some local examples that are just from here in Laramie that I'm familiar with. All I did was include screenshots from their Facebook pages, just to show you that you can have a brand identity with and without logos and heavily designed materials. There isn't a right or wrong approach. And what I really want to get across to you is that you can polish your brand identity without making a huge investment. And you don't even need a logo if you don't want one. So on the top left is Relative Theatrics, which is a local theater company. You can see they have a logo and a design kit, which includes colors and fonts that are consistent through all their materials. You'll find this imagery across all of their marketing, the swag they sell at their shows, their programs, their fundraising events, and anywhere they're mentioned. So when you see this imagery, you know who it's from. Now, this is just an example. Below that is Jennifer Power Art and, Art and Design, who I saw was here. So hi, Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer is a graphic designer and artist who sells her watercolor and clay work. You can see she has a logo, and she also includes some photos of her watercolor work. So using photos of your artwork is a really great way to brand yourself with the work you've already made. So Jen often paints these florals in this color palette, and you can see it matches her logos. <clears throat> and including these images of her work, it allows us to start to identify Jennifer with this style of work. On the top right, we have Nancy Marlett, who included an image of her work with a photo of herself. So this is a great example of having a brand without any logos or graphic elements. Her customers will connect to the image of her, as well as the style of her work which she's leading with right here on her Facebook page. Lastly, I included Tencent Stranger, which is a great example of having an identity made up of many people, which is going to be quite, quite common for musicians or anyone doing collaborative work. Again, they don't use a logo. Rather, they have an image of their newest album and a photo that includes all of their faces. This allows their audience to see the humans who they engage with, at their shows or by listening to their music, as well as the imagery, which is likely going to be consistent throughout all of their marketing as they sell their newest album, whether that's online, on social media, or in person. If we were to dig deeper into all of these artists' content, there would be no doubt that all four artists have a visual brand and a brand personality. And again, not one is right or wrong. A brand is as unique as your work. So we've only begun to touch on branding, and this is a topic that could be discussed at length. But I hope after this brief discussion, you're recognizing that having a brand is important, and it also doesn't need to be incredibly burdensome. Likely, you all already have the foundational pieces of your brand. So once you establish where you'd like to sell your work online, and you know how you want to present yourself and your work online, now you can start building your strategy so you can start to make those sales online. How will you market yourself? How will you actually lead folks to make those purchases from that online store? So the way you're going to get to those sales is through thoughtful marketing and sales. And what does that mean? In its simplest terms, marketing is building awareness of your brand to potential customers, telling people that you're there. And sales is turning that viewership into a profit by converting those potential customers into actual ones. So that's by getting your customers to make a purchase. Marketing and sales are two sides of the same coin and both are incredibly important parts of elevating your sales online. This funnel graphic you see on the screen is a representation of moving your customer from awareness of your work to the point of action where they buy from you. So sometimes you'll hear this referred to as a sales funnel or lead generation. At the top, they become aware of you and what you do. Then they express interest in learning more and they start to engage more with your work. Next, they come to the decision-making phase before hopefully taking action and making a purchase, 
whether that's buying a piece, attending a show, or even just opting to sign up for, for your email newsletter or to follow along with you on social media. So I wanna first draw attention to the top three phases of this funnel, awareness, interest, and decision. All three of these processes can be supported by your marketing strategy. That strategy is going to look different for every business, but it could include email marketing, any social media marketing on any platform. It can also include in-person connections you make, whether they're at a store or a show, or even just having coffee with a small group or a friend. Additionally, it could include partnerships you make with other organizations or artists in your community and events you attend like markets or conferences or any gathering in the public. Now, ideally, all of these avenues for connection to your customers lead to your website, wherever you've opted to host your sales. If you post on social media, include your website in your caption. If you meet someone new at a conference, send them to your website. If you're sending an email update, include a button that links to your website. Your website is where your sales are hosted and your audience needs to be sent there in order to make a purchase or learn they can make a purchase here. I can guarantee you that the number one way to elevate your sales online is to send people online to see what you're selling. So there's this all too common fallacy, which perhaps you remember from the field of dreams, where Kevin Costner received this message while wandering a cornfield to build a baseball field after hearing, hearing, if you build it, he will come. And in return, these baseball players arrive. Unfortunately, this isn't the case, especially when it comes to your online store or any kind of marketing. You can build it and you can build a beautiful site and perhaps you already have, and it will sit totally unused until you market it and tell people about it. So perhaps a more realistic statement here is, if you build it, you're like halfway there. <laughs> so <clears throat> if you're feeling unsure of how to market your website, a great place to start is by browsing the Wyoming Women's Business Center's library of previous marketing webinars. These are all available to you at no cost on the WWBC YouTube channel. And in these webinars, we dive into topics like social media, websites, and email marketing, networking, and many more topics. So we've touched on a lot here this afternoon in these short 30 minutes. So here's just a quick review of everything we've discussed, and I promise I'll get to your questions. I see that we have some already. So first, the pros and cons of selling online. Hopefully you have a better understanding on if this is a good fit for you or not to sell online. Next, we chatted about platforms. There are many options of web, web platforms to host the sale of your art. If you're still shopping around to figure out what is a good fit, I shared a few, and these can be a jumping off point for you to conduct your own research. Next, your brand or that consistent image and language you'll be presenting around your business and your work. Maybe you have a logo or maybe you keep it simple. You don't need to have one. Regardless, start to pay attention to how you're sharing your work with your audience. What kind of personality do you like to convey and how can you create consistency with this both online and in person? And lastly is your strategy. How will you get your audience to visit that website, connect to your product and make those connections? Will you use social media, in-person events or email newsletters? And how will you be 100% sure that you're using that website link in all of your marketing materials. So with that, I'm gonna open it up for questions. So continue to type those in the Q&A section and I'm gonna go over just a few quick pieces of information from our funders. The WWBC is made possible through several partnership agencies. Our primary funding comes from the US Small Business Administration and the Wyoming Business Council. I also wanna remind you that we are a standalone 501c3 nonprofit and every donation made to our organization is tax deductible and goes directly to our mission of empowering Wyoming entrepreneurs, especially women through our counseling, training and microfinance prog programs. If you feel this webinar was valuable to you, I encourage you to go to our website and consider a micro gift. Your five or $10 gift can make a difference in the programming we can offer and the number of entrepreneurs we can help. 
If you enjoyed today's training, you can find more of our upcoming always free webinars at wyomingwomen.org, as I mentioned earlier. You can click the training tab to see what's ahead to, and to register. And remember, just like this one, if you can't make the live event, no stress, all registrants do receive a link to the recording in their inbox to watch as your schedule allows. And one more thing before we get into these questions, Works of Wyoming is a brick and mortar store in downtown Laramie, as well as an online store that ships nationwide. It is a part of WWBC's Artist Development Program, and we're pleased to share that 2021 was a record-breaking sales year for the store, thanks to the beautiful work of Wyoming's artists. So our next call for artists opens on July 1st, which feels like a ways away, but probably isn't. <laughs> if you're interested in learning more, you can pop over to the Works of Wyoming Facebook page or visit the Artist Development tab on the WWBC website at wyomingwomen.org and mark your calendar for July 1st. Okay, so these questions, how do people determine pricing? This is where I struggle with the most. Jenny, you know, this is, uh, it's tough to say. Um, well, I guess if you're speaking about pricing your product, I would say a lot of that goes into analyzing the time that's spent on your work, the cost of your materials, and the value of um, of your hour. And it, I'm actually glad that you asked this question because we have a upcoming webinar that will be 30 minutes exclusively on pricing your artwork. I believe that one's scheduled for May, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but I think um, you know that's a conversation in and of itself, and I think that webinar would be a really great place to start. How to start getting traffic to your website? Again, I will go back to that sharing your website. Uh, tell people about it. Um, send it to your personal contacts. Anybody who you've connected with in your career already, if you have people who've purchased from you, send them an email and say, hey, we just launched this new website. We're really excited about it. Could you take a peek and see what we're offering over there? Um, I think, you know, wherever you're at and you're discussing your artwork, make sure you also discuss the website. Um, that's going to be how you start to get folks there. Now, when you get farther into it, there are things like search engine search engine optimization and that kind of thing so that folks are finding your artwork by googling for a certain type of artwork in their region and so i think there's work to be done there too but if you're first launching your website my biggest suggestion is to talk about it wherever you can send emails send texts have phone calls when you have coffee with friends ask if they'll pop over and check it out and just get some more eyes on it and lastly, have you seen artists having much success with print on demand platforms? You know, I don't know any artists personally who have used these platforms. Um, I know they're really common platforms and I, uh, you know, know many people who shop on these. And so I think it's tough to say. I think it takes a certain kind of artist who's creating a certain kind of work that is going to work well here, particularly graphic artists. So I, I wish I could give you a better answer than that. Um, but in my experience, I'm unsure of, of anyone I know who is selling, who's actively trying to sell on these platforms. But my suggestion would be maybe to pop around and see um, if, you, if you find a platform you like and maybe you could connect with artists there to see if they have forums or any kind of um, support for artists who host like Etsy does. That could be a really great question or a really great place to go with these questions. Well, thank you all so much for joining. I know we went just a little bit over here, so I appreciate you sticking with me. As I said, when we close the webinar today, a survey will pop up on your screen. It's a quick six question survey and I ask that you stay online and complete it. We do read all of these and it really helps us plan our offerings. So thanks again for attending on what could have been your lunch hour. I really look forward to seeing you all again soon.